today I'm here with Maria Valenti from Chocolations. Hi Maria, how are you? Hello, Tina, how are you? I'm um, so happy to be here. Thank you so much for being here on In My Kitchen. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about quick holiday meals today, so I thought we could start off with a little pomegranate limeade martini. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll try to uh, make this. So this is a little bit of uh, chilled vodka. I'm just gonna put that in my mason jar. I love this. I Do love you... the way you're doing that in the mason jar. That's great. I, I, I have to tell you, I found this um, this idea in a local store. They were selling this. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of Look at the color. It's gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? Perfect for the holidays. It's really nice. And I mean, you know, this beats any shaker out there. I love this idea. You could put this on any size mason jar. Give it a little shake. And you just pop the top off like so. I'm gonna give you a little bit. It's oh, really pretty. Pomegranate. I love. Do you like pomegranate? I do. I, I really um, am just. I haven't found a way of incorporating it into chocolate yet. Oh yeah. Well, I'm gonna. Really good. I'm actually gonna take this one. Has a little bit. I'm gonna give you a little bit of extra lime here. Thank you. And enjoy that while we get cooking on what um. What are you doing for the holidays? Are you well? You must that must be a busy time of year for you. We are doing a few events at the store. Uh, one of which is going to be our gingerbread house decorating, which is going to be in mid December. Um, we bring the kids down to our new party room, oh. and they will decorate gingerbread houses, and they're really nice size house. They have a great time with that. And Mrs. Claus comes. And oh, how fun. Reads them a story oh. and they have a really good time with that. And um, what are the ages that can come? And, uh, and really just like age three and up. Okay. I, I will have kids of all ages. And wow. It's That's really fun because, you know, making a gingerbread house is, you know, um, it's traditional, it's traditional yeah. and it's, it, you know, really makes you think about the holidays. And, and as far as, uh, you must have a lot of uh, corporate clients that yes. send out sweets to their, their customers. We do, and... we do. We're starting that as well now. We're um, beginning the process of gathering the names from all of our, our corporate clients, and they will start giving us, um, you know, lists for us to just. Um, How long have out. you been um, making? So you, I was reading a little bit about you, and I was, I was um, surprised to see that you actually have a degree in. Environmental law, is that yes, right? Yes, I do. Um, and this is much nicer, much sweeter. Right, yes. Um, so, what? Um, so, you've been in Chocolations in Mamaroneck. How long has your store been? I know you've had two stores, but in general, how long have you been in business for? I've been in business for nine years um, with a storefront, but I started making chocolate at home as a hobby when my kids were babies, and my kids are not babies anymore, they're 31 and 32. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've been making chocolate for a very, very long time, and it was really just um, my love. I loved doing it. It was fun, and people, you know, enjoyed getting the gifts from me. Right. But they insisted on paying me, and then I started thinking, hmm, maybe this is actually going to be a business right. one day. And I really wanted to turn it into a business, but didn't know how to go about doing that. Right. So I started doing a lot of, after law school, doing a lot of research on how to open up a business and then also researching how to work with quality chocolate. I went to the French culinary, took some courses wow. there um, to learn how to really uh, hone my skills. And, and be a real chocolatier, right? right? You know, I mean, right. there's one thing to, you know, no, you know, it's it, you really know about chocolate. It's it's not just that, you know, you're chocolate doing making molds very, and very yeah. complicated medium to work in and you really have to know what you're doing. It's well, I think a lot of people, I mean at home, um, and a little bit later on we're going to make a, a, a chocolate dessert, but a lot of people at home get, get um, intimidated by working with chocolate because it can scorch, it can seize up if you get it wet, if you're not using the right um, materials. But before we talk about dessert, we're going to get started on our quick holiday meal. So um, we're going to, I'm going to walk over to the stove and get started on some peas and mushrooms. Okay. And it's going to go along with our stuffed pork tenderloin. And um, yeah, so uh, do you have any holiday meals that uh, you traditionally cook for your family? You mean that don't involve chocolate? Not yeah, really. that don't involve <laughs> chocolate, right? Um, I sort of get off the hook because I have four older sisters 
and they generally take the holidays and I just get to show up as a guest. Oh, that's nice. Because usually I'm working until the very, um, you know, 11th hour right. on the holidays. So um, when I did cook, I used to be a good cook, but I've pretty much forgotten how to do everything in the kitchen other than making chocolate. So do you, um, do you generally um, spend a lot of time, I'm sure, and retail is really busy. So these, these hours that you keep must be, you know, do they keep you in the store long at night where you, you know, your children are more grown now, you're not yeah. really feeding a family? Right, exactly. I mean, they're on their own. Um, but yeah, I definitely um, put in crazy hours, especially this time of year. Right. Um, I'll be at the store usually from 10 in the morning until, um, you know, way after 10 at night. Oh, wow. So you're yeah. there late. So yeah. when you're home. So, well, I would say one of my secrets to getting a quick meal on the table is, you know, especially in the retail, it's kind of hard, but try to have everything prepared ahead of time. And I was um, saying I buy a lot of chopped or pre-chopped ingredients, so, um, I which is kind of what I'm doing yeah. here. So I have some pre-chopped onions. That's a and good idea. I'm gonna throw those in the pan and some with some olive oil and a little bit of butter and some sliced mushrooms and we're just gonna let those saute a minute and um, I'll come back to you and we'll make a quick little appetizer. Let's get these out of the way. And I really don't I don't really do much with these, I just kinda let them sit because the mushrooms need to get <clears throat> get cooked down a little bit. And we'll just let that go a second. And I use baby peas, but they're throw a little bit of thyme in there too. You don't have thyme, you could use rosemary. Those kind of the same woodsy herb. Okay, I'm gonna let that cook. I have become reacquainted with my crock pot. Oh, that's, so that I is love the crock pot. you know something that I did not invest in until just a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I have to tell you, it has become my my go-to yes. for everything. And, and and things that you would never think to make in them. Yeah. And then traditional things, you know. Um, but yeah, it's such a time saver. Yeah. You don't have to sit there. A lot of people are worried about the crock pot because they think the food's not cooked. But it is, it really cooks. Oh, yeah. It's cooked through and Absolutely. it's so, um, when you really cook meats, it's the best way to get those braised type yes. meats and not have to stand, you know, stay in the house. And My favorite thing is the um, soup stock. I make a lot of soup stock because I tend to use a lot of rotisserie chickens. Right. And I, I hate to throw away the carcass, so I make a lot of soup stock. And um, I do it overnight in the crock pot. Right. So in the morning I wake up and it's done and I just, I use the bags. The crock pot oh, liner bags. I've heard of those. I haven't used yeah. those. And so you just pull everything up. I drain it over a colander into a bowl, and it's done. Oh, what a great a idea! And yeah. then it's well done. And then you just toss that out, toss and save out the and stock, and yep. you have you use that for different things. You make yeah. a lot of soups, or I make a lot of soups, but I find that I'm using stock for you know just even um, in place of water. Right. You know? Yeah. A lot of yeah. dishes that it just adds a little extra flavor. Mm -hmm. um, I always keep like the box stock. Yeah, um, in stock <laughs> in my pantry, um, so that I always have something or a little bouillon too. I yes. try to always keep, but something to kind of you know. So um, okay, I'm gonna check the peas and the mushrooms, and then when I come back, we're going to make a, a quick little appetizer with some arugula and fontina cheese, oh. and I'll be right back. Oh. Them a little bit of flavor, you know. Uh, and then I'm going to, just sweating down the onions and the mushrooms a little bit. And then I'm going to just add the peas and we'll let them cook a little bit more. And that'll be that. And it takes just a few minutes to make this. One of my favorite dishes. It smells and I'm just going to let that work a minute. And okay, so um, while the peas and mushrooms and onions are cooking, uh, I'm going to make this quick flatbread. Uh, it's a... Um, Rosemary olive oil flatbread. It's made by actually made by flat out bread. And um, we're going to take a little bit of this arugula that I dressed with just a little bit of balsamic vinaigrette. You could mm -hmm. use lemon juice. And we'll just layer that right on top. You can serve this to company. You can have this as a light, you know, as a light lunch, a little snack. Oh, that looks great. Yeah, let me just put it right on top here. Just How spread it out. In advance, can you make that? Um, you know, you could. The only thing I, I wouldn't 
I would toast the bread, but I wouldn't make the salad, you know, the any kind of arugula or right. any kind of greens too far in advance with with any kind of dressing because it becomes soggy. Mm -hmm. um, but this took me just a few minutes to just cook in the oven. You cook it for a few minutes in the oven. I'm just going to put a little bit of the, for sure my hands are clean. I just wash them, of course. A little bit of this, like so. You know, I have fontina cheese. You can use whatever cheese you like. I just sprinkle a little bit over the top. That's it. You could even put a little extra dressing on there if you like. I love fontina and it's one of my favorite cheeses. And this is like a quick, quick little appetizer. And okay. it's so pretty. Thank you. So I was hoping I had a pizza cutter, but I don't. So we'll just improvise here. We'll just, I like to cut it into thir you know, thirds. Mm -hmm. I guess this could even go into quarters. Like so you could even, if you really wanted to make them bite size, cut them again. And that's it. A nice little pizza tray here. Should have broken that up a little bit more. That's okay. I'll just give you a little, a little taste here. Sometimes it gets a little hard to cut. It wants to come. It wants. It wants to come. <laughs> it's jumping, jumping ship here. There we go. It's a nice little appetizer. Okay. Thank you. Just give them to and give your guests. You know, even if you're busy, have a busy schedule. You know, you can whip this up at uh, five minutes, really. A few minutes to toast in the oven. And then a little bit of um, pre-washed arugula mm -hmm. and a little bit of whatever your favorite dressing is. You could even just do olive oil and pepper. This, uh, squeeze a little lemon juice and you know, you can make a vegetarian and just do the cheese. Um, oh, I love it. Yeah, it's really okay. great. So do you have company a lot? I guess not if you're not, you're not entertaining all that much. No, and usually when I have company, it's at my store, right. <laughs> which is kind of sad. Um, you know, people usually come to visit me there, and I find myself, you know, Ooh. just kind of doing something quick, and we'll have a glass of wine, and we'll have, you know, after hours. Right. And um, that's really about it. I, I just haven't um, had a whole lot of time to do some real cooking. Um, you know, I have a few things that are quick and easy and go to, like quiches. I do a lot of that. Right. Um, and things that you could heat up. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yep. Yeah, I always have to think about, um, you know, how quickly I can um, get it back on the table and how quickly I can get it on the table. Okay, so our peas and mushrooms are done. Mm -hmm. I always like to cook these first because they're pretty quick to make and you can, they don't have to be piping hot when you mm -hmm. serve them. They, you know, you could cover them. So, um, you know, just a little bit of peas and mushrooms, um, mushrooms and onions and peas. I put a little thyme in there and it's a little side dish you can give. Last minute, everybody usually has pot. I always have peas for pasta and peas or broccoli, some kind of frozen vegetable in the... That's a great pan too. Great I love pan. this pan, um, actually. Uh, it's it's a really, you know, um, it's a good size. It's mm -hmm. nice and deep, yeah, it cooks yeah. well. I, I, recent, I just got it recently, actually, and I really, really love it. Um, okay, and then, so the next part of our, our dish are, uh, is gonna be, do you like, Tenderloins, pork tenderloins? Oh, I love them. Okay. So, you know, for the holidays, everybody thinks turkeys. Mm -hmm. I always think turkeys. Um, but we don't always have time to stuff a turkey. And, you know, so what we're going to do is make a stuffed pork tenderloin. And I'm actually going to save time by using the same pan. Oh. So you can kind of, you know, if you, if you don't need to, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to move this aside so it's not near the raw food. I'll just keep that aside so it stays warm, and I'm going to get my cutting board. Have you ever butterflied a tenderloin? I have not. So it's kind of like, you know, cutting, almost like, oh, you want to cut it like you're opening up a book. Okay. We're going to do this here. I just don't want to cross-contaminate your lovely food here. So I will stay back here. I'm a little bit of a stickler when it comes to... Food safety. I am too. Right? If you really have Absolutely. to be these days. So basically what I do is, you can use any knife. I'll just show you, even with just a regular kitchen knife. I don't have really a fancy paring knife. Um, and I, I, of course, have 
gotten these at um, the local store. I cleaned them up. I took all the fat off. Mm -hmm. You know, the pork tenderloin kind of looks like this. Take right. it out. So I cleaned up most of it. I kept a little bit of the fat for flavor. Mm -hmm. But you basically are going to slice it down the middle. Don't go all the way, of course. You just I start with just a little, almost like you're um, just cutting the top of it. And then I like to spread, you know, like kind of open it. Okay. Right? And, you know, you just keep going till you reach it, you know, and it starts to flatten out and open up like a book. It's not something that has to be, you can keep cutting. I'll, I'll keep cutting down the sides to make it flatter. I'll also take, um, once it's all opened, I'll take a little saran wrap. Okay. And cover it and I'll pound it down a little. Okay. So um, this is pretty much how we butterfly it. And while I do this, um, I'm in, a, in a pan, I saute a little bit of uh, onions, garlic, um, I'm sorry, onions, uh, celery, and carrots, mm -hmm. and a little bit of olive oil. I just cook it for a few minutes just to get it soft. And I'm gonna do that, and we're gonna put that in with some cornbread stuffing, oh, wow. and a little bit of sage, and a little bit of pomegranate, and we're gonna mix it all together, and we'll line it up along here, and then we'll close it with some kitchen twine, and it takes about 20 minutes in the oven to cook. Because you've opened this up already, so it's essentially mm -hmm. half the size, and it doesn't take long to cook at all. So, so we have our cornbread stuffing and the pomegranate seeds, and um, we have, we're gonna put in a little bit of chicken stock. Oh, and that's beautiful. Thank so you. Pretty. It's so festive, right? Yes. I'll put cheese in anything, so I'll put a little Parmesan cheese in there. And I always I'll like to... My own heart. Yeah, <laughs> I just love cheese. It's really... If I couldn't eat cheese, I'd be a little upset. And we'll, of course, put a pinch of pepper. You could put any kind of seasoning that you like. I'm just, you know, pretty simple here. And then all you do is... Um, normally, I'd let this sit a little bit, but we'll just... Just to give you an idea, you basically take a spoonful of the stuffing. Well, this should be a little bit softer, but that's okay. It's a little crunchy right now. You could always add more chicken stock if you, you know, if it's too, these are a little bit harder, so they're kind of popping out, but just to give you the idea of how we do this. And like so. And you don't really need to roll it. You really, I like to start in the middle. I like to pinch it up a little like that. Mm -hmm. And then give it a tie. This is, uh, you know, 100% cotton kitchen twine. It's safe to cook with. And I just, I always start with four or five, and then if I need more, I add. It's kind of like a brajol. Yes. <laughs> you can cut the twine out. You can leave it. I try to do two in the middle, one on each end, and then I'll go back mm -hmm. with it. But you get the idea. It doesn't usually pop out this much. A little bit dry and then if the ends are too small I kind of tuck them in and I'll put a q-tip in there a q-tip a <laughs> toothpick that would be awkward um, and gross uh, <laughs> put a toothpick in there on the ends and then all you do is you spray a baking sheet okay. this will actually the recipe that I have will give you two tenderloins because they usually come in packs of two mm -hmm. and you put it in the oven at 425 degrees put this on the baking sheet Put that in the oven at 425 degrees. And you, I like to cover it for like the first, takes about 25 minutes, I like to cover it so the stuffing doesn't burn. And then the last 10 minutes or so, I take it off and it okay. starts to crisp up. And that's really, that's that's it. And once it's done, um, you take it out and slice it up and I'll show you the, the finished product. We'll get this one in the oven. Beautiful. Okay, so uh, after cooking this at 425 for about 25 minutes, here is our final product. Oh, that's gorgeous. Thank you. And we will see if we can find some tongs here. And you can lay this out on your, like a bed of spinach, your guests. And that is really beautiful. Thank you. Well, we'll just cut a little slice here. Actually, I have a slice, the right fork. All right, and 
And you have your stuffed tenderloin. And you can take the string off as well. Okay, maybe. Thank you. Keep a nice little package there. There we go. And and the stuffing must keep it very moist. It, looks so it nice. does. And and you know, I was gonna say, you know, if it's not, um, I'm gonna give you some peas to go Thank with you. your. There we go. That looks beautiful. What a colorful plate. Thank you. Okay. And there you have it. A quick holiday meal for that was quick it was pretty quick yeah yeah and these take 25 minutes you really can't you really cannot beat the time uh it's a little time to cut them open but it really doesn't take long and it's a it's a great meal okay so now that we've had our entree it's time for the dessert oh thank you well you're going to show us how to make a chocolate fondue for the home cook okay this is a really simple, simple dessert that anyone can master, and that's why I thought this might be kind of fun to bring to you today. Okay. It's something that we actually do for people. We'll sell them the fondue already, the ganache already made, okay. and either tell them how to put it together, or we will also send them with a little kit with everything that you're going to see on it. So it's a kind yeah, of a... So they can pre-order They can pre -order a, it. a yeah. chocolate fondue kit. Yes. That's yes. amazing. Okay. And get the bread from Westchester Bakery in the Marinick, which is the best bread oh on the planet. Gosh. It's I... Italian bread that it's just, you know, if you've never had bread and chocolate together, you're in for a real chocolate. I have to tell you, that's something I've never so had. So I'm, I mean, I've had chocolate and pretzels, but let's see. How do we do this? We okay. Want... All we do is take the um, heavy cream, and you must use heavy cream for this. Okay. It really does make a difference. So we take the heavy cream to just barely a simmer. Okay. You don't want to overdo it with the cream. You don't want to burn it, and you don't want to boil it. And then you just take it off the stove, bring it over to your chocolate, and I have about two cups of heavy cream here. Okay. About an equal amount of chocolate. Now, what kind of chocolate are you using here? Because I know there are different... Absolutely. This is semi-sweet um, dark chocolate. I'm not gonna put all the cream in here just in case I did not, can I put it right on? Yep, here, let's just, there okay. we go. Perfect. Um, I'm not going to put it all in because I don't ever measure. It's a really bad habit I have. Well, it's something that um, we all do. Yeah, so I just sort of do it by eye. And you wanna take it really gently. You wanna just make sure that the cream and the chocolate are getting incorporated very well. I also do not ever heat the chocolate and then add cream. You want to always add the hot cream to the cold chocolate. Oh, that's good advice. Okay. Yeah. And um, I'm going to say you probably used about a cup here. Looks I like. think so too. Yeah. 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 And I probably had about two cups yes. of chocolate in it. I, I like a ganache to be rather thick. Okay. So I tend to go maybe a little more than, um, it's not quite two to one, but I would say probably it's about um, a third cream and two-thirds chocolate. And it's always better to have less and add more, yes. right? Instead, because you can't, you can always add, you can't take away. That's exactly, the exactly. rule of thumb that I always use when cooking. Yeah. Um, you know, and you always... can see that the chocolate is melting really nicely it's because the cream was at just so good. Yeah, the cream was at just the right consistency. And you want to do this so gently and so slow. Chocolate is really temperamental and it does not like to play well with liquids. Right. That's why you want to be really careful with the cream. You don't want to overheat it because if you do, it's going to break up. Right. And, and even in cooking, when you add cream to something, you really should yes. never bring it to a full boil because it starts to separate. Exactly. So, and I see that this is really turning into a chocolate yeah, this should be a really delight nice right now. This is really amazing. Nice yeah, this is beautiful. Uh, so we just want to get some of the chunks um, set, you know, um, melted. How do you know if you need more cream? Is there a certain... I'm getting to the point now where I feel like I do okay. because it looks like it is a little bit thick, so I am going to add a little bit more cream. And that will also help to melt the remaining chunks of uh, chocolate. Okay. And can you do this with um, white chocolate? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You can make a ganache with you know, milk, dark, white. Um, if you can find that peppermint chocolate, yes. you can do that too really anything that you like. You can also add flavorings to your ganache. A lot of people will put things like Grand Marnier yes. or um, you know, some sort of a liqueur, uh, Frambois, really nice in it with the raspberries. Um, 
you know, something that just kind of makes it more festive, more holiday. Definitely, you could use peppermint extract. But there's um, special there's special oils you're supposed to use with chocolate, right? Special. Yeah, you've got to be careful. Um, chocolate is, uh, it you know, the good chocolate it has cocoa butter as the um, fat, and you don't want to mix a different type of fat with the cocoa butter. They just don't play nicely together. Mm. So you want to make sure that you're using a um, compatible type of a flavoring and you can find them in gourmet shops you'll find things that say that they can be used just with chocolate okay you really can't use just like a um, you know off the shelf type of thing okay but once your once your ganache is ready it's pretty stable and okay at that point you probably could add a liqueur with no problem. You know what, let me finish stirring this yeah. for you. I'm gonna okay. give it a, a gentle stir. Okay. And then why don't you move us along. Um, I'm gonna show you what we did here. These are some of the things that we love to dip in chocolate. Um, potato chips. This is They're the new just thing. Simple, I, yes. delicious, amazing. If you've never had potato chips with chocolate, you have to try them. My personal favorite, marshmallows dipped in chocolate. Um, everybody loves apricots dipped in chocolate and Today, honestly, I could not find strawberries in the grocery store. I couldn't find them the other yeah, uh, yesterday. I don't know. Um, and it's so interesting that you said that. So we did raspberries instead. Okay, well, and raspberries are great. I mean, I love that anyway. These are Rice Krispie treats that we made in ha in house. So you make your own Rice Krispie yeah. treats in the store. Yeah, that's and fabulous. that's also you know great dipped in the ganache. Bananas, everybody loves that, and everyone's favorite pretzels. And you said here you have some bread, this, and you're gonna dip. You're gonna yes. chop that up. Uh, Do you like think this needs more um, cream, or is it a good consistency? I like that consistency. Okay. Um, you you know some people do like it a little thinner, but I like it like that. Okay. It's not gonna be as messy. All right. You know when you dip in, it's not gonna drip as it's much. It's not gonna so. drip right. So do you want to pour it into the bread? Sure. Okay. Okay. So, so we hollowed out this delicious bread okay um, so you you cut the top off of I the cut bread the top off and made a nice little circle and we're gonna not get rid of this because this is delicious okay dipped in the chocolate so I'm gonna cut up this while you pour okay the chocolate you trust me trust I me sure okay. do. Of, this presentation is outrageous well I think it's your beautiful tray here too. well it's uh, it's teamwork that's what it is <laughs> So you don't have to be fancy with you know how you're cutting up the bread. It's you know, just going to be chunks. And remember, this is going to be served most likely to your family. Right. So, you know, we're all family here. And you know, I would also then cut up the top because who wants to waste a bit of this really good oh, bread? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing like crunchy bread. Yeah. Whether you're dipping it in something sweet or something mm -hmm. savory, I mean, it's it's really how we grew up, right? Just yes. lots of they call it in Italian scopetta, like you. Take it from the, yes. you know, from the bottom of the the dish. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. Okay, so I would just then put this nice bread in this remaining little section. Oh my gosh, this looks fabulous. And you can see how simple this is to put together for your family. A really easy um, dessert. You can do it ahead and just keep the, the uh, ganache in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it and then microwave it. And and um, when you microwave it, do you have a, sp um, I know sometimes you should microwave it on half power or full power, would you I say? do it on, um, I always forget to change it to half power, so I usually end up doing it on full power. Okay. And what I will do is just only do it for 30 seconds at a time. Right. And keep stirring it after each that, 30 that's seconds. That's the rule of thumb yeah. when you're microwaving chocolate. If, mm -hmm. if I'm, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, and people always ask me, but I always say, you know, I always say a minute, half power, take yeah. it out, give it a stir, and then 30 seconds at a time. Yes. Because what happens a lot of times is people burn the chocolate, yes. and that's what scares Absolutely. them in the yeah. kitchen with, you know, yeah. making things like this. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure where to start. I, I feel like a, a <laughs> it is kid, a little intimidating. It is when really you first see it, but uh, dive but right in. I think I'm gonna I'd go say with, with the bread. It's so I think that's what I'm gonna go with. So I'm gonna use my hands. I took the forks out, but what the heck, right? So we just <laughs> yeah, dip it right in. in. Dive right in. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. It's heavenly. Okay, here we go. Oh gosh, that's so good. That's amazing. Isn't that that's delicious? delicious. I definitely would do the. I, I think the next time, I mean in like the next 30 seconds, yeah. I'm going to go back <laughs> for the uh, the crunchy. 
excuse me, for the crunchy bread. Yeah. This is amazing. It's really Maria, good. Maria, I cannot thank you enough. Oh, thank you. Um, this is unbelievable. It's really simple to do. Really simple. It's, it's, it, it's unintimidating. The presentation, if you could find any kind of platter or something. Yeah. I mean, I happen to have this beautiful platter, but you really could do this. Any home cook could do this. Absolutely. And I think the key is not to not to get your not to get your heavy cream too hot. Exactly. And to take it slow. Yeah. And and I think uh, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me today on LMC TV. If you'd like to find out more about Chocolations, you can go to their website at chocolations.com. And if you would like to find out more about the recipes we had here today, you can go to my website, which is cheftini.com.